Okay, it's a time to start the webinar. Thanks for joining this session. Uh, my name is Satish Bantu, technical leader with a focus on CFD at Vitals PLM. I'm your host for this session. And welcome to the high level overview presentation on multi phase flow modeling using CFD. For those who are already familiar with multi phase flow modeling, this webinar would serve as a refresher. And for those who are not familiar with this uh, multi phase flow modeling, this could be a good starting point. Uh, the agenda for the session is as shown here. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our company, Vitals PLM, on who we are and what we do. I'm not going to much, spend much time here, and then we'll move on to a brief introduction to Starsy Simplus as a CFD code, as well as an integral part of complete PLM solution offering from Siemens Digital Enterprise. Finally, we spend much time on topic of the day, multi-phase flow modeling in CFD context. And for that matter, we will see multi-phase flow modeling within Starsy Simplus. We're briefly discussing about various models available along with some interesting applications from various industries. And then follows with a summary and Q and A. Vitals PLM is a company has multiple industry experience, namely oil and gas, machinery and equipment, petrochemical and process, nuclear, aerospace, medical devices, manufacturing and automotive. We are based out of Houston, Texas. A Vitals PLM is a solution partner to Siemens PLM products, uh, such as Starsy Simplus, FEMAP, NX Nastron, AMSIM, BDS, Battery Design Studio, and HEATS, which is a multidisciplinary design exploration as well as optimization software. Uh, we are a team of uh, uh, mostly PhDs and masters having background from solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, materials and uh, data analytics. Vitals PLM provides engineering consultancy services and also the services to the automation and the customization needs both for software and hardware. When it comes to CFD, Vitals PLM has capabilities with its rich consulting experience by delivering some of the challenging projects successfully in the past for oil and gas and process industries, which involve physics like uh, erosion, corrosion, fluid structure attraction, mixing and separation. On the marine and offshore industry side, Vitals PLM has experience with jumper VIV, which is uh, vortex industry vibrations, floating systems, ship dynamics, riser, and pipeline VAV. With that, uh, let's move on to uh, introduction to the Siemens Center Star System. Sim Center Star System Plus is a multi-physics solution for CFD engineers. With its single integrated user interface, helps you to cover your complete application scope with a broad range of validated models to simulate various disciplines and various physics. And these physics are not just limited to CFD, but also extends to electromagnetics, reacting flows, solid mechanics, particle flows, rheology, electrochemistry, and aeroacoustics. And here we can see some, um, some cool animations covering a wide range of industries and applications where star system plus has been used here the first example we see uh, is a, a good example for multi-phase flow modeling where we see the free surface still use by uh, uh, some other phase being injected from the bottom and the second example we see is an external aerodynamics on a, or around a, a performance vehicle and the flow field we see in terms of uh, vortices around the, uh, the performance vehicle. 
And the third example we see is, uh, is an ex typical, typical example of turbo machinery, where we see a rotor and stator interactions. And the next uh, example we see is from the automotive industry, uh, where we see uh, it is a typical water, uh, rainwater management, uh, where we see uh, because of the viper action, how the the rainwater or water on the windshield has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, dispersed. And the next example we see here is um, from the mining industries where uh, excavator is uh, digging out some the uh, some material which is modeled as a discotainment method. And one more example from the automotive industry is the internal combustion engine, where we see the valve uh, motion and as well as the, the flow inside the cylinder. And then another example is from the marine industry, where we see uh, uh, the movement of uh, two ships uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a typical wave, a surface wave. And one more example is from uh, in the automotive industry where we see uh, in one of the autumn after treatment application, uh, how the flow looks like. And finally, we have uh, an example for electromagnetics uh, in the, inside the electric machines. And also we see uh, an example of uh, mixing in, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the process industry. Uh, in addition to the comprehensive set of uh, physics models, star system plus also enables uh, simulation of resident and flexible body motions with techniques including uh, mesh morphing, which we can see here in the IC engine application where uh, the valves are mo moving uh, with, with help of mesh morphing. And also uh, we can see the mesh collapsing inside the piston along with the overset mesh and also the uh, six degrees of freedom uh, under the model called dynamic fluid body interaction within the star system plus. Uh, one thing I would like to mention, uh, Sim Center, star system plus is part of uh, a bigger portfolio called Sim Center that combines best in C simulation, system simulation and testing solutions, as well as design and exploration analytics. Here you can see uh, the inner circle uh, comprises of the C simulation, physical testing, and system simulation. All these solutions work together under one umbrella to help you engineer into innovation into your products faster with greater confidence. So. With that, a sim center as a portfolio solution with the tagline called innovation, engineer your innovation with simulate, explore, and test. After we have seen um, some applications for uh, flow applications where sim center starts and is used, uh, let's have a look at the uh, multi phase flow applications. Here we can see uh, multi-phase flows are widely absorbed in many industrial processes, such as oil and gas, nuclear reactor technology, chemical process, food production, aerospace, and automotive industries. Accurate modeling of these multi-phase flows is a need to investigate and predict detailed behavior of those flows in various applications. Here in, in front of us, we can see a various applications where the multi-phase, multi-flow approach is needed. Uh, starting from the top left corner, where we see both evaporate and condenser, the evaporation and as well as the condensation of the refrigerant uh, can, only, can only be modeled as a multi-phase approach. And in the second example, we see a spray painting where the paint is injected in terms of the droplets onto the panel to be painted. Once it interact with the panel, it forms a fluid film. So both the droplet modeling and the uh, thin film of the paint can be only modeled by multi-phase. And next follows the additive manufacturing. Again, an example, a good example for multi-phase applications. And 
Uh, another interesting example is from the aerospace where we see high secretion on the leading edge of the aircraft being, uh, we see this ice deposition. Again, this is an exam good example from the first flow. We already seen the vehicle water, water management example in the previous slide. Uh, and the next in from the process industry where we see the coating or dipping uh, in the paint pool of an automotive component is a good example for multi-phase. And we have multi-phase pumps where the working fluid is not a single fluid, but it's a, it's a multi-phase uh, flow. And one more example from the automotive is the after treatment where the urea has been injected onto the, uh, the veins, static veins, where after impinging on the static surfaces, it creates a uh, fluid film and then it interact with the exhaust gases downstream. Another example from the uh, from the uh, from the process industry uh, home appliances uh, is the washing machine or dishwasher, uh, where the uh, cloth has been modeled as a different phase inside a water as uh, the continuous phase. From the pharmaceutical industry, we see here is coating of, of uh, the tablets, the, the medicine uh, is an example is again a typical example of multi phase flow. Multi-phase models in SIM center starts in place. In most cases, the real world we live in is beyond single phase perspective, and we just have witnessed in the previous slide with some good examples. To understand the modeling needs of multi-phase flows, it is good to ask ourselves some fundamental questions. What exactly is the multi-phase flow? A flow in which more phase, phases coexist in the same flow domain. It could be gas bubbles in liquid, a liquid droplets in gas, a solid particles in gas or liquid. Here we see some examples. The first example we see here is a water droplet and a green leaf uh, in the surrounding air. Uh, that is an example for a liquid droplet in a gas. And second example we see here is a gas bubbles in liquid. A typical example one can think of is a, a soda in a glass where you see a, the, the bubbles which are rising in the uh, soda in a glass. And the final example we see here is uh, a sand particles in desert uh, in, 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 in the air. But uh, when I see, when I give this kind of examples, it can contradict our understanding of phase we have studied in our high school. And then the second question we should ask ourselves is what is the definition of a phase in this contest? Phase, in physical world, phase is a thermodynamic state of matter. Uh, there are three phases in physical world, solid, liquid, gas. Well, there is a third, third uh, there's a fourth state of matter called plasma we're not going to discuss about. It. But when it comes to the modeling world, phase is defined by other characteristics. Liquids of different densities can be seen as different phases. Bubbles of different sizes can be seen as different phases. Particles of different shapes can be seen as different phases. Uh, with that fair understanding of multi-phase flow and definition of the phase in the modeling context, let us have a look at the multi-phase models available in Starsys in place. Uh, Sim Center Star System Plus is a comprehensive suite of multi phase models. There are seven multi phase models available in Sim Center Star System Plus. Uh, uh, the first one is the all inner multi phase model called as EMP, the second, mixture multi phase model, volume of fluid, dispersed multi phase, fluid field, Lagrange multi phase, dispersed, uh, discrete element method. Uh, all these seven models have a different strength and they can be used in combination to cover all the needs. So in the upcoming slides, we will be go looking at these models in more details and along with some good examples of simulations performed with each model. Further, the seven 
multi-phase models listed out in the previous slide can be broadly classified into two families based on the flow modeling approaches. We may all recall what we have studied in our graduate course about flow modeling approaches, Euler and Lagrange approach. In, in Euler and approach, the observer considers the particles, bubbles, or droplets to be continuum passing through a fixed volume. Uh, this is quite similar to the illustration of Euler and approach by river example we have studied in our universities, where the observer is sitting on the river bank and observing the river flowing in front of him. Whereas in the Lagrangian approach, the observer tracks parcels of particles as they move through space and time. Again, this is very similar to the sitting in boat and drifting drown stream in the river example, which we have studied in the university. Uh, in the modeling point of view, all layer models are solved on a computational grid. The flow is assumed to be continuous and the flow to be uh, passing through this grid such that we can consider these equations, uh, transport, uh, equations for transport of mass and other variables. Uh, on the other side, Lagrangian models are solved with the phases represented as the discrete particles, each representing uh, multiple uh, droplets or particles. The equations of motions are solved as the governing equations for each and uh, for, or for these particles to determine their trajectory. Uh, let's look at the, um, the modeling strategies in both Euler and multi-phase. Uh, In Euler and multiphase, uh, the modeling strategies are based on the regime to be modeled and the slip conditions between the phases. The model applicability is based on the assumptions around the regime. Uh, here we can see one in one regime, the phase is dispersed in under, it can be assumed to be dispersed in under phases, droplets or bubbles. And in, in, in another regime, the same phases are, can be assumed as immiscible. Uh, as a result of that, uh, resolving a free surface between them is the can can be an engineering interest. And when it comes to uh, uh, making strategies based on the slip, uh, the model applicability applicability is based on the assumptions around the slip conditions between the phases. If the slip condition between the phases is less significant, there are zero slip models which can be used for that condition. Uh, but if the slip condition uh, between the phases is significant, there are models which can provide independent transport equations for each phase to accurately model the slip. Another option for modeling slip is to calculate the slip velocity algebraically or in an average sense. Here we can see in an example in the bottom, uh, wave and wave breaking, explaining uh, the different flow regimes. At the left red box, uh, the phases are immiscible to each other, and resolving a surface, uh, free surface is the interest here. And at the middle and the right red box, one phase is dispersed uh, in another phase. At the middle box, uh, we can see the air bubbles are dispersed in a liquid phase as a continuous phase. And at the right box, uh, the, the water droplets are dispersed in the continuous air phase. Uh, further, the model applicability for these two scenarios is based on the level at which the dispersed phase is desired to be resolved. We'll see in more details in the upcoming slides. And when it comes to the Lagrangian multiphase, the modeling strategies are based on uh, the different from, uh, from the online multiphase. Uh, the, the modeling statuses are based on the shape and uh, the volume loading of the discrete phase. And uh, when it comes to the shape, uh, the Lagrangian multiphase model cannot uh, model the non sphericity, but uh, uh, non sphericity, but not the specific. When I, what I mean here is uh, uh, the Lagrangian multiphase cannot physically model the, uh, the any, any shape other than the sphere but it can include the effects of uh, non-specificity by 
by, by, by making some modifications to the dry clause. Whereas uh, the discrete element method, which is again part of the Lagrangian multiphase modeling, can able to model any arbitrary shape, either as a polyhedral particle or as a, comp a composite or a clumped particle. And in terms of the volume loading, uh, the modeling strategy can be uh, can be divided between the LMP and DEMP, uh, DEM, uh, the discrete element method, based on uh, if, if, if the, the volume loading is less than 10%, uh, the LMP is the suitable candidate. And if, if on the other side, if uh, the loading is more, uh, uh, especially for the dense packed material or, or in, a, in, a, in examples of fluorescent particles, but where the loading is significant, uh, DM is the, the suitable model. Uh, for that reason, uh, uh, there's, there's a general rule of thumb to say that uh, when the volume loading is about 20%, the contact and collisions between the dis uh, dispersed phases uh, would become significant. And for that reason, uh, the LFP is not a suitable candidate for this scenario where the particle and particle contact are important to resolve uh, because the LFP assumption is, uh, uh, is such that the displacement of the displacement uh, is as fast. And for the sprays in the uh, Lagrangian framework, uh, the droplet collision and breakup can be modeled. And when it comes to the larger loading of the particles, uh, DM is able to model uh, the contact forces, including the effects of the shape. Let's have a look at the, uh, uh, the details of each uh, multiphase model in detail. To start with, uh, let's have a look at uh, all in multiphase. The all in multiphase model is the most compl complete model out of all the all in family of models. The reason why it's called complete uh, due to the fact that it solves a set of transport equations for each phase. Uh, but at the same time, it is also the most computationally expensive model for a given mesh size. Uh, and it can model uh, different additional physics like phase change and crystal growth. And within the uh, all and multiphase model, there are sub models for uh, sub models called as population balance models for modeling the size distribution and dispersed phase. And use cases for the all and multiphase model are a bubble columns, mixing vessels, settling tanks, and fluid waste pipes. And when it comes to the uh, population uh, balance models uh, for the uh, for modeling the size distribution of the bubbles, these models can also help to include the effects such as coalescence and breakup of dispersed phase. The two models available in Star Simplex are S gamma and A music. We're going to see in detail about these two models in the upcoming slides. To understand a bit more about the Allen multiphase. Uh, the all in multiphase model uh, consider there should be a primary continuous phase uh, in which uh, the secondary phase has a bubble or droplet, uh, which is in a dispersed fashion. Uh, so the distinction between the primary and secondary phase deter determines the nature of interaction with the phase and phases, and it defines in each phase. Uh, though the all in multiphase model solves a set of equations for each phase, it, it solves the same pressure field for all the phases uh, model under all in multiphase model. And each phase can be, uh, can be a single a component uh, species or a multi-component species or multi-component uh, phase. And it's possible to uh, model reactions between uh, the species belong to the same phase or across, across different phases. Turbulence can, can, can also be uh, solved for each phase. Uh, and if there is a, a gland, presence of the granular phase, it is possible to uh, mod, uh, model the turbulence effects uh, coming out of the granular, presence of the granular phase. Uh, within the all and multi-phase model, uh, it is possible to include the effects of interactions between the continuous and dispersed phases. The interface forces uh, 
include and drag experienced by dispersed phase while interacting with the continuous phase, lift due to shear of continuous feed on the dispersed phase, and the virtual mass, uh, which is also known as um, added mass. It is a force on the dispersed phase due to the acceleration of the dispersed phase with respect to the continuous phase. Uh, when, when the dispersed phase accelerates uh, in a volume of continuous phase, it causes a force proportional to the acceleration that leads to a concept of uh, you know, added mass. It is particularly important when the continuous phase is dense compared to the dispersed phase. And second, uh, and another interesting phase force is the wall lubrication model. And it is, uh, the wall lubrication model is a counter force acting against the lift uh, created by the shear in the wall boundary layer. Uh, and it is important for, uh, in by modeling the bubble columns. And the next uh, interface model, uh, which, which is possible to model in our own multiphase framework is the turbine dispersion force. And this force is accounts for the interaction between the dispersed phase and surrounding turbine entities of the continuous phase. Apart from the uh, interface momentum transfer between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase, it is also possible to model the interface mass transfer between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase, such as wall and bulk modeling, reactions between the continuous phase and dispersed phase, a single component crystal growth. And finally, it is also possible to model the interface energy transfer. Let's have an example uh, of uh, a mass transfer. Uh, using the Euler multiphase. Here we see two examples for the mass transfer uh, using the Euler multiphase. The, the first one is a single component crystal growth. On the top uh, picture, we can see uh, a solute with uh, low concentration is entering into the flow domain uh, and it undergoes a crystallization mechanism. And as a result of that, at, to, towards the outlet, we see uh, this increase in the volume fraction of the ice crystal. At, uh, at the inlet, you can see uh, the volume fraction of the solute, which is uh, quite low, uh, 0.005. And at the outlet, it increased us at 65%. So here, uh, there are two mechanisms can be uh, can be modeled uh, in this Euler multiphase model for the crystallization. Uh, one is the solid crystallization, which is based on the concentration driven, uh, difference driven. The other one is melt crystallization, which is temperature difference driven. Uh, and the second example of what we see here is the a scraped surface freezer where uh, a sucrose solution fed into the freezer. Uh, here in the, in the bottom picture, we see uh, the sucrose solution is fed into uh, the freezer, which looks like a, con a section of the concentric cylinder from the top. As it goes inside the, uh, the freezer, uh, the freezer have a outer wall, which is cool and stationary, and the inner wall, which is adiabatic and rotating. And because of this rotating, rotating action of, by the inner wall, uh, the rotor scrapes the, uh, the ice crystals formed uh, because of uh, the temperature difference of the solution uh, from the inlet to outlet, and also the mass fraction of the solution. And the nucleation rate, we can see in here in the contour, we can see uh, uh, it is uh, it is starting from the inner uh, outer stationary wall, which is which, which is at the cooled condition. Towards the outlet, we can see there's an increase in the nucleation rate. And towards the outlet, the rotating uh, inner wall will scrape scrape out all the ice crystals formed out of the crystallization. And next example we see is for the a granular flow model uh, within the Euler multiphase. Uh, the granular flow model is used to estimate the particle phase stresses in, in gas solid flows. Uh, here, the, the example we see in the top is the fluidized bed of uh, solid particles. And the particle motion of uh, these kind of gas solid flows are, are determined by the packing density. For dense packing, uh, there's a model called the solid pressure force model, which is used to 
model the motion uh, which is dominated by contact and friction. On the other hand, uh, for the packing density, uh, which is below the packing limit, the motion is determined by collision and kinetic energy. Uh, for this kind of uh, motion to be modeled, uh, there is a model called granular temperature model. And the second uh, model under Euler multiphase is the erosion modeling. Uh, again, here we have a, two models to account for two, uh, two types of erosion mechanism. The first one is impact, which is due to the particle impact to the walls. And the second one is the abrasive wear, which is due to the particle scoring walls. Here uh, we see a, a subsea valve, uh, which is a uh, undersea example where the particles are interacting with the, uh, the, the surfaces of the subsea valve and eroding uh, the surfaces of the, those walls. And all this phenomena is modeled using the erosion model inside the uh, previously, uh, the erosion could only be modeled uh, uh, with the LMP, the Lagrangian multiphase, or the discrete element model. And now it is uh, it is possible to model the erosion in, within using the Euler multiphase model. With, the, with the, the the main benefit of uh, having the erosion model in the EMP is the the fields which we see for the erosion are smooth and continuous. Uh, whereas in the LMP, uh, to get the same smooth, continuous uh, uh, fields for the erosion, it requires a large number of particles along with the turbulent dispersion. And, uh, the, the, and, the, and the simulations are not repeatable. So that's the downside of uh, using erosion modeling in the Lagrangian multiphase uh, framework. And next model in, in within the Allerin uh, multiphase framework is the volume of fluid, fluid model. This is the second method in the multiphase flow model, and this is mostly uh, uh, mostly and widely used uh, because of its simplicity and stability, stability in simulation. Uh, it solves a single set of uh, transport equation with, uh, along with the volume fraction, uh, equation for the volume fraction for the phases. Uh, it, uh, it uses to track the motion of free surface uh, by, by, by modeling the, the sharp interface between the phases. And it can also uh, model the phase changes uh, between the phases under the volume of fluid model, such as boiling, evaporation, condensation, cavitation, solidification, and melting. Uh, within the Weaver's model, it, it is possible to include the effects of surface tension. There are some predefined off waves, which are aimed for marine up simulations. We're going to see in detail about this predefined view of waves in the upcoming slides. The key applications include marine hydrodynamics and sea keeping, uh, fuel tank sloshing, oil and gas, flow assurance, ice engine cooling. Here we see uh, two examples of uh, BYF where the free surface capturing is, is the engineering interest. And it requires uh, the grids capable of resolving phase interface. Uh, and uh, unlike uh, the oil and multiphase, there is no need to model interface uh, interactions on a subgrid scale. Uh, again, uh, it, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is able to uh, include the surface tensions uh, and also it's possible to uh, model various additional physics of boiling and evaporation. And there are two methods uh, within the Weaver model uh, to solve, uh, to capture the, uh, the interface, the sharp interface between the two, two phases, which are immiscible. The first one is single step, the second one is multi-step. And if in the single step, the volume fraction is solved at the same time, uh, like, uh, like other flow transport equations. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a, a constraint to fulfill the condition of uh, CFL to be less than one, or uh, uh, you, can, you, know, you, can be, you can get relaxed for 0.5 if you use second order uh, time marching scheme. 
Whereas in the multi-step multi approach, the volume fraction can be calculated multiple times per flow time step. Here we can see an example, and uh, this is a simple time expression uh, application where we see uh, the interface being diffused in terms of uh, uh, a time step in 5 minus D, which is uh, which is coarse, which is bigger, uh, which is not sufficient for capturing the the free surface between the phases. And on the other side, uh, with the multi-step approach, even with the bigger time step of one e minus two, still it is able to capture the interface in the software. And here we see a comparison uh, between the single step and multi-step in terms of the, the time it is taking to resolve and uh, the way it is uh, capturing the uh, the interface. Uh, here we can see uh, with single time step, uh, the solution time is 9.6 hours with a time step of only minus three, whereas with the multi time step approach, uh, the solution time is just 2.4 hours, the drastic decrease, uh, even with a bigger time step of only minus two. And when it comes to interface sharpness, uh, uh, the multi step approach is able to uh, preserve the interface in a short frame, even with the bigger time step. And uh, the other interesting feature within the WIGWF is the non-reflecting boundary conditions available uh, within the WOF. And for marine and offshore applications uh, involving waves, uh, spurious reflections from the boundaries can distort the results. And that's where uh, this non-reflecting uh, boundary treatment can be of uh, a great help. Uh, within the WIGWF, uh, there are two uh, ways of uh, implementing uh, the non reflecting feature. The first one is the wave binding, and the second one is wave forcing. Uh, the, wave, the wave damping uh, can be applied at uh, only at the outlet boundaries uh, or a specified distance, and it can damp out the waves uh, and so that it will not allow uh, the damped wave uh, coming back into the domain uh, so that the, the reflections can be avoided. And it cannot be used uh, uh, at the inlet uh, because um, uh, it can remove the incoming waves. On the other hand, the wave forcing, uh, uh, as the name implies, it forces the specified wave shapes uh, near the boundaries, including inlet. Here we can see in the bottom picture uh, the way uh, the both non-reflecting options have been implemented. Uh, unlike wave damping, uh, it can preserve the, the actual wave shapes at the, at the outlet, uh, the wave forcing uh, option, and which is less intrusive uh, on non-reflecting treatment. And here, uh, there's a it's a comparison between the wave forcing option and the wave damping option on an example of uh, Casey's Hull model scale. Uh, with a wave height of uh, 0 0.062 meter and the wavelength of 3.949 meter and with a speed of 2.017 meters per second, uh, we can clearly see that uh, the wave forcing uh, is, is able to attain the periodic be behavior uh, much quicker than the damping method, uh, which results in a significant time saving. And also it can prevent spurious reflections. And on the uh, on the computational uh, point of view, it allows a smaller computational domain because it is able to uh, quickly uh, get the periodic behavior in, in a quicker way. Uh, within the VWF, uh, there are several possibilities to define various waves. Uh, we, we can model flat wave uh, representing a flat calm water a first order wave, which is linear uh, for, for, for applicable for deep water wave applications. A fifth order, which is non-linear, again, it can be uh, seen in the deep water wave application. A synodal, uh, which is used for uh, shallow water or uh, free waves. Here in this example, we see here uh, uh, a KV LCC2 uh, ship, uh, which is at the scale, uh, uh, scale level. Uh, under these synodal waves. And also there's a possibility to model the irregular waves 
uh, as per the uh, standards of John Swap and PHN Moxowitz. Another interesting uh, feature within the weaver is the ability to model the surface tension. And the surface tension contact angle can be can be defined, can be modeled in different ways, in three different ways. Uh, you can define the surface tension value as a static value, or you can define uh, the contact angle uh, using a dynamic model, uh, where it separates the advancing and receding contacting angles with, uh, with the treatment of blending in between advancing contacting angle and receding contacting angle. And the third one is based on the capillary number. Uh, uh, others, other laws such as standards laws can also be uh, set up using a uh, field function, which are not available as a, as a implemented uh, models for surface tension. Here we see an example uh, where uh, there's a comparison between the star system plus result with, uh, with the experiment for the Kisler model. Uh, when the a big droplet is interacting with the, the, with the, with the surface and uh, the way it is collapsing and colliding with the wall, all this can be, at, can be compared at different time levels. The typical example for this kind of uh, feature is the vehicle rainwater management, where uh, uh, the surface tension effects are significant. And another feature within the VWF is the ability to model the cavitation uh, phenomena. Uh, there are three models available for to account for the cavitation effects. Uh, the first one is Snares or cavitation model, which is called the reduced form of uh, Rayleigh Placid model. And we also have the full implementation of Rayleigh Placid cavitation model, which can include the effects of uh, bubble growth, acceleration, uh, viscosity of the uh, of the gases phase, which is created out of the cavitation phenomena, and also the surface tension effects of the, the gases phase, which is created. And, uh, and the final one is the homogeneous relaxation model uh, suited for modeling flash boiling. Uh, here we can see an example of flash boiling of a vapor fraction coming out of uh, the swirl injector. Uh, typically, use, use cases for cavitation modeling are with marine propellers, where you can expect some cavitation on the uh, surface of the propeller blades. Uh, it's also equally applicable for the hydrofoils, nozzles, valves, a GDI, a gasoline direct engine uh, injector nozzles, pressurized water reactors. All these applications see uh, uh, some sort of uh, cavitation phenomena to occur in the real world. Another example, uh, another good example for WAF is the marine application, uh, where sink and trim of a marine vessel can be can be modeled using WAF model. Uh, here, the boat hull has been set up as a DFI body, uh, which is called dynamic fluid body interaction body, and the free surface has been set up using the VWF approach. Uh, the, uh, and with this. Uh, in simulation, the pitch and heave rates can be monitored to assess the performance of the marine vessel. And the bottom uh, animation shows uh, uh, the interaction of the two boats, uh, where uh, other capabilities have been used along with the B boy of model. Uh, here, the warship mesh is used for allowing the object to move, and, uh, and the two, uh, the big boat and small boats, have been modeled as the dynamic. Fluid body, fluid, fluid body interaction models, and uh, within the DF by DFPA model, um, these two bodies have been modeled as uh, 60, 60 cases of bodies, and uh, you can also see uh, these two uh, boats have been connected with some uh, strings, again uh, allowing uh, for the uh, more flexibility. Yeah. After we discussed about the Lagrangian multiphase models, uh, let's look at the Lagrangian multiphase flows. Within the Lagrangian multiphase flow model, uh, the Navier-Stokes equations are solved for the continuous phase, and for the discrete phase, the equations of models are solved. Uh, 
by considering the discrete phase as a representative parcels. Uh, when I say parcel, uh, it can be uh, a droplet, it can be uh, a, a solid particle uh, uh, passing through a uh, continuous phase. And the Lagrangian multiphase approach is well suited for cases uh, where the volume fraction of the dispersed phase is relatively small. And we have seen this in the, in the previous slides uh, where the, the loading, uh, the volume loading of the dispersed phase is uh, around 10%. And uh, in that scenario, uh, uh, the interactions with the solid bond ponders become important. The key, key applications uh, include uh, the vehicle soiling. Here in, the, uh, in this animation, what we see here is uh, the armored vehicle uh, is uh, moving in a, a desert condition. And as a result of that, we see how the sand particles, which are lifted by rotating uh, tires have been interacting with the other uh, surfaces of the armored vehicle. And uh, uh, we can also see the, uh, the Lagrangian multiphase application in the spray coating, cyclone separation, erosion, aerosol uh, dispersion, liquid fuel combustion, spray cooling. As we already discussed uh, uh, in, 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 in a detailed way in the previous slide about the LMP approach, uh, uh, here, the genetic term particle uh, in, in, within the Sarsen place is used to describe a solid particle, liquid particle, or it could be a gas bubble or a massless particle. Uh, it is possible to have a coupling in, in both ways. Uh, it can be a one way or two way. If it is one way, uh, uh, the dispersed phase is not having any influence on the continuous background fluid. If it is a two way, uh, uh, it is assumed that uh, the dispersed phase have an influence on the continuous background fluid. And uh, it can be used for any, any number of arbitrary dispersed phases. And uh, when it comes to the dispersed phase, uh, uh, it is more like a parcel uh, following the flow in the, in the, in the continuum of the uh, continuous phase. Uh, like like the uh, like in the earlier multiphase uh, model, we have seen uh, interface uh, forces as interactions between the continuous phase and dispersed phase. Uh, the LMP particle as a dispersed phase can also experience uh, 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 some forces uh, as a result of its interaction with the continuous phase. Uh, the particle uh, which, which we are called particle forces. Uh, so a particle can experience a drag force uh, when it, while it is interacting with the continuous phase. It can experience a shear lift uh, due to the velocity gradient uh, normal to the relative motion. And it can experience pressure gradient force because of the pressure difference uh, or, or in the continuous phase flow field. Uh, very similar to the virtual mass or added mass, uh, which we have discussed in our multiphase flow. Uh, LMP particle or a parcel can experience virtual mass force. And again, this is a force on a particle while it is accelerating in the continuous phase. And uh, another interesting uh, uh, particle force is the Coulomb, Coulomb force. Uh, it, it is an electrostatic force acting on the charged particles. Uh, it can be used for the uh, modeling the field charging applications uh, uh, with, the, with the Coulomb force model. Uh, like, like the other multiphase uh, interface interaction, interface force interaction, turbulent dispersion can be modeled on the particle, uh, LMP particle level. And also there's a possibility to define your own uh, body force uh, to, uh, to accommodate other uh, interactive, other interactions as a, as, a, as a different physics. In addition to the uh, Momentum transfer between the uh, continuous phase and dispersed phase in, inside the Lagrangian multiphase flows. Uh, it is possible to model the mass and heat transfer between the continuous and dispersed phase. Uh, uh, here you can see some of the some of the models available for to take into account of mass and heat transfer. The droplet evaporation and condensation. Uh, 
of uh, while interacting with the uh, the continuous phase. Uh, so here, the droplet or the LMP particle can be a single phase, a single component, or a multi-component. Uh, similarly, uh, a cold combustion can be modeled um, to simulate the transport, gasification, and combustion of cold particles. That the cold particles can be modeled as Lagrangian particles. And it's also possible to model the particle reaction. Uh, when it comes to reaction, uh, it could be a combustion or devolatilization of the particle at the surface level. And also it's possible to uh, model the heat transfer between the continuous phase and the discrete phase. And also it's possible to model the radiation at the particle level. Um, here we see an example of uh, droplet size generator application um, for the uh, Lagrangian multiphase flow, uh, uh, which is performed by Nukiyama and Tanazawa, a researcher. Here, what we see is uh, uh, with, with, with the Lagrangian multiphase approach, we can actually uh, generate the distribution of droplets, uh, starting with a known uh, diameter of a droplet at the at the injection. So uh, within the star system plus, there are different uh, uh, injectors available: a point injector, path, surface table, solid cone, and hollow cone. Uh, with the known um, size of the uh, droplet in terms of the shorter mean diameter, it is possible to uh, populate the droplet distribution uh, by simply defining the, the the mean diameter and the modeling parameters called A and B, uh, which, are, are, which are for the distribution shape. Here we see the normal distribution of the, the particle being uh, populated and distributed. A typical use cases are high-speed liquid sprays in ice engines, where uh, the atomized, uh, uh, the fuel comes in the form of droplets and, uh, and it undergoes uh, different mechanisms, uh, primary breakup and secondary breakup to form a population of uh, different uh, size distributed particle droplets uh, further in the downstream. Another uh, set of uh, models available uh, within the Lagrangian multiphase are for the wall, to account for the wall interaction effects. For wall interaction uh, effects, uh, there are uh, four models available. The first one is by Gaussman wall imprisonment, uh, which is used for uh, modeling the droplet impacting walls. And it can model, it can it helps to model the deposition, rebound, breakup, and splash. Uh, here uh, we see this example uh, where uh, uh, on the on one axis we see the wall temperature and the other axis we see the uh, increase in the weapon number. As we see, uh, uh, as we move, move from the uh, smaller weapon number to the higher weapon number, we can see uh, uh, all the uh, physics uh, happening out of the wall impingement. At the lower weapon number, it's just the position. And as it, as it moves towards the higher weapon number, it is, uh, it is possible to model the rebound, breakup, and also the splashing of the uh, deposited uh, the film, uh, which is as a result of uh, a droplet impinging on the wall. And the second model we have is the Bay owner of wall impingement model, which is suited for um, hot, hot, hot wall, uh, where um, uh, it is possible to model additional physics of uh, boiling when the uh, droplet uh, impinges on a hot wall and it undergoes a boiling, uh, boiling phenomena. And the third model we have is a sato wall impingement, which is uh, useful to model the oil droplets in a typical oil mist separator. Uh, it, it, help, it, it is possible to model droplet rebounding and spreading using sato wall impingement model. And finally, we have erosion model uh, under a Lagrangian multiphase. We have uh, compared uh, the erosion Lagrangian uh, multiphase model with the oil and uh, erosion uh, multiphase model. Uh, uh, within the erosion uh, submodel uh, under the Lagrangian multiphase framework, it is able to uh, it, 
model uh, a particle impact and and also the uh, material removed uh, from as a result of the erosion. Here we see an example of uh, uh, a spray painting where uh, the Lagrangian multiphase approach is used. The spray is injected from the nozzle as a Lagrangian droplet, and the nozzle is moved around the panel uh, using the offset mesh capability. As the Lagrangian droplets comes out of the nozzle, they impinge on the wall and create a film uh, of uh, paint, and then it's spread out on the on the entire surface of the panel. After we discussed about the uh, Lagrangian multiphase model, the next model is the discrete element method. Uh, uh, DEM is uh, is uh, is an extension of Lagrangian framework uh, to accommodate uh, uh, a large number of densely packed particles of different sizes and shapes. Uh, when there is a high loading of particles, uh, the particle to particle contact force are significant. Uh, which cannot be modeled by uh, Lagrangian, uh, simple Lagrangian uh, multiphase model, uh, where a DEM can be can be can be used for account for the contact uh, forces to be modeled. Uh, it can also be used for solid granular model uh, material flows, uh, where the particle shapes and the correct collisions behavior is important. A typical examples include mining industry. Uh, where rock mechanics and transport of granular materials uh, are, are the applications for the DEM. In oil and gas, uh, the particle transport to the power pipes is an example. In, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, the table coating, mixing and packing of uh, the tablets is an example. Uh, in the agricultural uh, industry, the particle hoppers and conveyors uh, where uh, the contact forces are important to model. Here we can see uh, uh, different uh, sizes and shapes of uh, uh, discrete element uh, particles. Uh, here we see in the, uh, we see sand, uh, we see uh, uh, tablets, all can be modeled uh, you know, as, as a, a discrete element particle. Uh, uh, within the DEM, the, the particle types are su supported are, uh, uh, the first one is a primitive DEM particle, which is spherical in shape. And the second one is a coarse grain. Uh, it, it's a, uh, as coarse grain is a, a sphere representing, a spherical parcel representing many parcels. And uh, there's a composite uh, to model uh, rigid unbreakable particles. And when it comes to modeling flexible and breakable uh, particles, uh, uh, there is a modeling of, uh, option called particle clumps. And in addition to the uh, primitive uh, spherical shape, uh, there are also shapes like cylinder, cylindrical, capsule, and polyhedral as a primitive DM particles. Uh, uh, in addition to the uh, LMP particles, uh, the DEM particles are uh, able to model additional forces such as rotational lift on the D on the particles, rotational track force, which are uh, which are not possible to uh, model with the LMP particle approach. And also, it is able to uh, model the contact forces uh, through uh, various models implemented in the DEM framework uh, to account for the con contact forces. There is a hedge mendel model friction model and account for the, uh, the cohesive forces between the particles, there is a linear cohesion model available within the DM framework. And also the particle void fraction can be accounted. Uh, the second model uh, uh, we, we discuss here is the coarse grain particle approach. Uh, as we have uh, seen in the previous slide, uh, a coarse grain particle is a parcel uh, representing uh, a number of identical unresolved particles. Um, here we see an example of a fluidized bed where uh, 1.7 billion particles simulated with uh, 
100,000 parcels, uh, which are coarse skin particles, and which help to significantly reduce the the computational time uh, to seven minutes, uh, from from seven minutes to uh, to seven minutes to simulate the 0 0.1 second of physical time uh, using 72 CPU. Um, Within the partial contact uh, case coarse grain model, uh, it is we can calculate the contact force uh, forces based on the partial being one large particle, and both the models calculate the fluid particle interactions based on the representative fine particles, uh, and apply the all fine particles in a partial. And next. Uh, Option available is the composite particles. The DM particles can be modeled as a composite particle. Uh, DM composite particles are residue particles formed of uh, multiple spheres. Uh, here we can see uh, the example of mining uh, where uh, the crust or mined particles are not uh, perfectly sphere, spherical in shape. They have arbitrary shape. So to model uh, those arbitrary shapes and in a realistic way, uh, the composite particles can be used in DM particle, DM uh, framework. And the contacts are based on the multiple spheres. Uh, the lift, drag, and spin forces are calculated at the center of mass of the, all the uh, multiple spheres representing the one complex uh, composite particle. And these composite particles can be quickly or easily uh, generated or created from, from, from the CAD geometry. Here we see in the bottom, uh, the composite particles have been um, uh, created using uh, a CAD geometry imported into star systems. And next uh, option available is the, uh, to model uh, the, the particles are as a flexible uh, deformable particles uh, using the particle clumps approach. Uh, are they, to, to model the deformation of the, uh, of the particle clumps, the forces between the spheres uh, uh, can be uh, modeled by a recent model called partial, par parallel bonds model. Uh, by solving this parallel bonds model, it is possible to uh, uh, calculate the deformation uh, so that we can see uh, the flexible uh, particle clumps. Uh, as, so not only uh, the particle clumps can be uh, flexible, but they can also be breakable. Uh, if, if, if the applied tensile or CSS uh, reaches, uh, reaches a certain limits, uh, which can uh, lead to a, a breaking of uh, the particle clumps. And, uh, and also, uh, the damage can be uh, can be modeled using a, a model called concentrate damage model. Uh, and here, one, we, one example we see here is uh, uh, in, the, in one of the openings that you have seen the washing machine example where uh, the fabric, uh, the cloth, has been modeled as a DM particle uh, a particle clump, where we can see uh, uh, the deformation of the, uh, the the deformation can be modeled. Uh, using the particle clamp, and it's while it is interacting with the uh, uh, with the with the water inside the uh, washing machine. Another uh, primitive uh, DM shape is the cylindrical particle. Here we see two examples of uh, cylindrical particles. Uh, the top one is the the conveyor, the screw conveyor where the particles are cylindrical in shape. Uh, unlike uh, a composite particle uh, uh, with, with the cylindrical shape uh, primitive DM particle, it is possible to resolve contact on edges. Uh, it can accurately model the particle faces sliding over each other. Uh, it can uh, help to reduce uh, computational time, uh, uh, unlike uh, Composite particle where uh, you know it, it, it requires at least 20 spheres to represent uh, uh, a particle which is cylindrical in shape. So with with the cylindrical particle, uh, uh, each cylinder can be modeled as one particle rather than a representation of 20 spheres, which is in the case of composite 
particle. Uh, here we see uh, the bottom example, uh, the tab tablet coating, where the tablet is more or less uh, uh, a cylinder with uh, with a low aspect ratio of uh, with a low diameter to the height ratio. Whereas in the top example, the cylinder is having a low diameter to height ratio. Here we see an example of a fluidized bed uh, where uh, the, the the particles, the fluidized particles, are modeled as uh, uh, there's the capsules uh, uh, having a, a, a cylindrical shape in dominance. And the final uh, primitive DM uh, uh, particle shape available is the polyhedral particle. Um, again. Uh, it can help. It can help to calculate the contact uh, forces on the sharp edges and corners, uh, which is not possible with uh, with the composite particle approach. Uh, again, uh, uh, like like the composite particle, the particle uh, the the polyhedral particles shapes can be can be can be generated uh, using uh, uh, imported parts through the three D CAD modeler inside the star system plane. And uh, at the injector, for, for the particle injector, uh, there are settings which allow for the uh, the population of size. Uh, so it is possible to model a different sizes of the polyhedral particle, not just a single size polyhedral particle. Here, uh, here we see an example of. Uh, uh, mixing of particle particles modeled as the polyhedral DM particles in a rotating drum. Uh, the typical use cases for uh, polyhedral particles are packed pet reactors, where the particles looks like uh, uh, arbitrary polyhedra grains, uh, bar barley, corn, rice, vegetables, rocks and aggregates, and bricks, uh, fuels which are coal, uh, solid fuels which are coal and firewood, which have uh, uh, arbitrary polyhedral shape. Uh, the current limitations for polyhedral particles, it cannot uh, um, able to model the non-convex shapes um, because uh, uh, currently the non-convex shapes are not supported by the contact algorithms. And it, it is not possible to make a particle clumps, uh, clumps and composite particles out of polyhedral particle. After we discuss about the DM um, method, the next uh, uh, multiphase model is the dispersed multiphase. Uh, shortly, it calls DMP. Uh, DMP can be seen as a lightweight uh, version of the Euler and multiphase model, uh, which is uh, mostly suitable for modeling low loading of small droplet particles. Um, it is an alternative to LMP. Unlike LMP, uh, the discrete phase is modeled as a continuous phase, uh, but uh, but but not uh, but but not by solving a, uh, a set of transport equations for the dispersed phase. Uh, the key applications include the automotive soiling, aerospace, icing. Uh, uh, like uh, so again, uh, this is an alternative to LMP uh, based on the, Based on the uh, requirement of the application, uh, because uh, it's a it's a lightweight uh, a model compared to uh, LMP and EMP, uh, and when it comes to the coupling with uh, continuous phase, it can be uh, one way, uh, meaning to say that uh, DMP phase is only influenced by the continuous phase, but it cannot uh, influence the uh, the uh, the continuous phase. Unlike DMP, uh, LMP, DMP phase and their emplacements are continuous. Uh, when when uh, D DMP phase interact with the continuous phase or a wall, uh, so the the impingement can be it can be a continuous, not just uh, a discrete, uh, which is in this case of uh, Lagrangian multiphase flows. Here we see an example of automotive soiling. Um, uh, uh, here, here we see uh, the 
rainwater management application uh, from the automotive industry, which is modeled using DMP, where uh, the, the rainwater has been modeled as a discrete uh, uh, multi-phase. And, uh, and when interact with the wall, uh, it creates a fluid film. Uh, and all, here uh, we also see other uh, uh, modeling capabilities like overset mesh morphing uh, have been used. And it took 16 hours and 10 hours for one wiping cycle. Uh, it can be used uh, with a, a fluid film fluid film model, uh, but uh, it cannot be used with a, a hybrid of which we see in the upcoming slides. Another example of uh, DMP is, uh, is the uh, collection efficiency on a boiling 77 natural inlet. Uh, this is an ice secretion example where the DMP is used and compared with the experiments and this a star system plus a DEM model uh, well predicted uh, uh, against uh, the experimental uh, parameters uh, in terms of the collection efficiency. And the next model is the fluid film model. Uh, the fluid film model is, uh, is, a, is a component of uh, our and multi-phase framework uh, used for modeling the distribution of a thin layer of fluid on solid surfaces. Uh, key applications include uh, vehicle rainwater management, selective catalytic reduction, shortly called as a SEER, fuel sprays, lubrication, spray coating, and deposition, and aircraft ice protection or uh, ice secretion. Uh, within the fluid film, it is possible to uh, model melting and sol solidification of the fluid film or the thin film. Um, here we see an example of uh, ice formation uh, when when the when when the uh, leading edge of the aircraft has been uh, hit by supercooled droplets. On the other side, we see uh, the formation of water. From the from the ice deposited, when uh, when the leading when the aircraft being uh, surface has been heated, uh, and also it can it is possible to uh, uh, use uh, mesh morphing to account for the ice buildup, uh, 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 which is calculated by the by the com by the combination of uh, discrete multiphase model and the fluid film. Uh, which is the example here we see in this case. And within the fluid film, it is possible to model surface tension. Uh, with the surface tension, it is able to capture rivulets. Uh, 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 it, is a, it is available as part of hybrid walk film where uh, it is possible to have an interaction between the warp model and the fluid film model so that uh, it is possible to model both thick and thin film thin films uh, when uh, when the wiper pipes out the rainwater uh, I, at, beyond some volume fraction of the water it can be modeled as a volume of fluid approach and below that uh, threshold it can be modeled as a thin so so that's the advantage of uh, using a hybrid wharf and film for this particular uh, rainwater uh, management application for vehicle, uh, including the surface tension efforts. Again, here uh, the, uh, to account for the surface tension, uh, the contact angles can be uh, set uh, using uh, available models uh, as both as static or dynamic physical uh, mode. Uh, with the implement of implementation of surface tension uh, in, in the inside the fluid film, it is able to improve uh, accuracy accuracy against uh, the the computation computational expense. Uh, with the viewer approach, it requires a fine mesh to capture rivulets. But whereas with the fluid film approach, the surface tension effects can be uh, can be easily captured with one cell wide, uh, uh, keeping the uh, uh, the accuracy uh, by minimizing the computational uh, expense to model the rivulets. 
in this example. Uh, within the fluid film, uh, the fluid film can be modeled uh, in, in, a, in a study way. Um, I, uh, with the steady state approach, it, it is um, helpful to reduce the uh, time to solution. Um, the typical examples are uh, uh, the evaporation convention, uh, boiling, melting, and solidification. Here is a comparison we see uh, between uh, the steady state approach and the unsteady approach within the fluid film. Uh, with the option called the stabilized thickness equation option within the steady state model, um, it is uh, able to reduce the, the solution time drastically. In the case of unsteady with a time step of uh, five milliseconds, it took 2600 iteration to get a converged state, whereas in the uh, steady state, it just took 320 iterations. A typical use cases for uh, steady state fluid film are selected catalytic reduction, water management, aircraft, ice cream. And uh, here we see uh, one more example for the fluid film. Uh, here what we see is the, uh, the after treatment application of uh, selective catalytic reduction where both Lagrangian and fluid film models are used. Uh, the droplets are modeled as uh, Lagrangian particles are injected into the hot exhaust flow. And these liquid droplets uh, uh, interact with the mixing vein and forms the fluid film. And further, uh, these droplets uh, uh, undergo a, a boiling uh, a phenomena, and then uh, the, the, the boiled vapor uh, mixes with the exhaust gas downstream. So it's a, so this is a good example to demonstrate uh, uh, the use case of uh, both Lagrangian and fluid film. And also, um, the the, uh, the the boiling phenomena at uh, at, the, at the fluid film level. Uh, after we discussed about all the uh, uh, multiple models available in the sense of the star system plus, uh, it's time to summarize the models. Uh, um, when it comes to the island multiple models. Um, the transport equations are mod, are solved per, per phase in all in multiphase, whereas in the case of WAF, it is only one set for the all the uh, phases uh, available or to be modeled. Um, and in, in, in the case of uh, dispersed multiphase also, it is uh, per phase, uh, one for the continuous phase and one for the dispersed phase. Uh, slip model between the pages uh, that is not required because uh, a two set of uh, transport equations are solved for each phase. Uh, uh, in, in the case of WAF, a slip velocity can be algebraically modeled. Uh, and then the, in the dispersed multiphase model, it is not possible to model a slip. Uh, and the drag loss can be modeled in Euler and multiphase, not in the WAF not in the, uh, it's, it's possible in the dispersed multiples. Dispersed flows uh, can be modeled using all in multiphase, uh, not with the WAF because uh, at big is involved, two phases are um, immiscible in nature and uh, both are at uh, uh, comparable levels of uh, volume fraction. And also it's possible to model the dispersed flow in the dispersed multiphase model. Stratified flows, uh, it is possible to model with um, Euler and multiphase. Uh, there's a, a sub-model called large scale interface model with which uh, it is possible to model the stratified flows. The uh, same thing can be uh, modeled uh, using WOF, but uh, not with the dispersed multiphase. Uh, the two-way coupled approach, uh, meaning to say that the the influence of the uh, dispersed phase uh, on the the continuous phase, yes, it is possible to uh, model in the Euler multiphase. Uh, yeah, it is possible in the WAF. It is 
possible in the dispersed multiphase. And summary of the Lagrangian multiphase models. Uh, coupling with the flow, yeah, it is possible in the both Lagrangian and DEM discrete element method approach. Non spherical drag, yeah, it is possible, but in the case of Lagrangian, it is only through uh, modification of drag laws. Whereas, uh, uh, non spherical drag can be modeled in DEM by actually modeling the, the shape of uh, non spherical, non spherical particle. A particle to particle contact is not possible in the with the Lagrangian multiphase model, right? whereas it is possible with the DEM. Non spherical contact, it's only possible with the DEM. Wall impingement models are only available in the Lagrangian multiphase framework, but not in the DEM framework. Uh, uh, just to recall the general rule of thumb on the volume loading, uh, it is greater than 10%. Uh, the contact force are significant and uh, Lagrangian multiphase uh, model cannot be a right candidate. Uh, in that case, DEM is the right uh, choice. Uh, uh, to summarize all the multiphase models, both uh, all alien and Lagrangian multiphase, um, all alien multiphase for dispersed flows of bubble uh, droplets and granules, granules in a continuous phase. Uh, dispersed multiphase uh, DMP is uh, is an all alien equivalent to Lagrangian multiphase, but the, the limitation is uh, it is only one way coupled with the flow. Uh, volume of fluid approaches for the stratified flows are three surface flows. Bubbles and droplets uh, can be resolved with this approach. Uh, Lagrangian multiphase LMP for the droplets and granular flows uh, where the uh, particle to particle contacts or particle shapes are not of interest. And for the sprays, uh, breakup and uh, automation, both primary and secondary, and the volume impingement uh, effects can be modeled. And the particle loading should be less than 10% to apply uh, to use the Lagrangian multiphase model. A discrete element method is suitable for uh, solid particle flows where the particle to particle contact and particle shape are of interest. Uh, it can model dense particle packing. Fluid film for thin fluid films on surfaces, uh, which are practically uh, to be resolved. And uh, finally, the multi-phase uh, interaction models allow hybrid approach using the uh, best model based on the flow regime to be uh, modeled or calculated. Yeah, this is his last slide of the summary. Uh, to summarize, uh, the real world uh, multiphase flows are complex and, and they can cover uh, many regimes, stratified, dispersed, discrete, and films. And the sim center star system does provide a comprehensive set of uh, multiphase models to cover all the uh, regimes uh, mentioned above. Each um, model is designed in, in, a, in a, to be best in class for a subset of flow regimes. Uh, and these models are being continuously developed. I uh, mean, to say that uh, uh, the, the, in, in future, there, uh, there are more and more uh, features and capabilities uh, will be implemented uh, in, in, to the existing uh, uh, multiphase models. With that, um, uh, this is time for a Q&A, uh, questions and answers. Uh, please feel free to uh, if, uh, ask your questions, put your questions in the chat window so that they can be answered. Uh, there is a question about um, MMP, mixture multiphase model. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, because of the time limit, uh, uh, 
that multi-phase uh, mixture multi-phase model has not been discussed here, uh, but that is uh, that is uh, that is one uh, model available uh, in the in the comprehensive set of uh, multi-phase models in star in place. Yeah, that's correct. For any questions, you can reach out to uh, the, the the email address mentioned uh, here, support at vitalsplm.com. We're more than happy to uh, answer your questions by mail. Well, there's a question about the sharing the presentation. Um, uh, the presentation cannot be shared, but this recording uh, can be available in our, uh, in our YouTube channel uh, for your reference. I will send you the details uh, where to find, take this recording.